Hey guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Timbuktu Foundry Pack, which is a premium and stylish everyday bag. And I've been using this for the past couple of weeks and so far it's been a pretty good experience. The bag has a really solid build quality. It's been comfortable to wear. It has a simple yet effective layout and it just has a really nice classical look. So I'm really excited to share it with you guys and let's just jump in and take a closer look at the Timbuktu Foundry Pack. Starting out with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. I think the bag has a very stylish look. It seems like a classic style that's been updated for a modern generation. And so it really feels like it's gonna fit in well into a professional environment or with a nicer outfit, but it's still not gonna be out of place for walking around a college campus or for just taking exploring on a day in the city. As far as the materials, the bag is made out of a really rugged waxed canvas and it has some leather accents at different points of the bag. So just a really solid and premium build quality. One thing I will note is that although I haven't noticed any staining or issues from the light rain that I've been caught in with this bag, I would be pretty scared to get caught in a heavier downpour. I feel like the stuff inside the bag would be pretty well protected, but I'd be worried about there being some sort of staining or discoloration on the bag. So still not as easy to use in all sorts of different environments, such as something like the ballistic nylon that we see on a lot of Airs bags. But overall, the build quality on the bag has been great. I really like the use of these classic materials, the stitching and everything all around the bag just feels very well put together. The bag is currently offered in two different colors. You can buy it in a black or the version that I have here is called the Scout. And this is kind of a greenish grayish version, kind of depends a little bit on how the light is hitting it. But I really like the versatility of this color and it looks great in both options. On the front of the bag, there is a metallic loop that you can use to attach different accessories such as a bike light or maybe a carabiner. And so this is a very interesting choice here. This loop doesn't really come out a whole bunch, so it's not a lot of space. I actually wasn't able to fit in my hero clip that I normally use to hang up my bags. It was just a little bit too small of an opening. So I do wish that this would have come out a little bit more just to provide some extra give or that it actually looped down over the front of the bag because it's kind of facing upward. It just ends up being a little bit awkward to use. Continuing along the outside, there is a simple slip pocket here on the right that offers a decent amount of space. Currently what I have in here is just my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case so that I can get to them quickly. This compartment, even though it has a nice amount of space, it doesn't have much give, so this isn't really a great spot to put a bulkier item such as a larger water bottle. So I do wish that this had had some elasticity to make it a little bit more versatile, but for the most part, still nice to have this kind of taller and larger compartment on the outside to be able to grab something quickly. On the other side of the bag, there is a larger zipper compartment and this one does work well for holding a water bottle. Currently what I have in here is the same water bottle that you've seen in all my other daily bag videos. And that fits in there really comfortably. I like that this one has a little bit of additional space. It has these guards on the side that allow the compartment to come out. And then if you wanna use this for holding something that's not as tall as a water bottle, you can toss some accessories in there. There's plenty of space. And then you can actually zip this compartment up to prevent anything from falling out. And so this zipper here is a little bit trickier to use, especially when you're first using the bag. When it's brand new, it can be a little bit harder. Once you start to break it in, it can get a little bit easier. So for me, since I have been using the bag quite a bit, you can see that the zipper is starting to smooth out. This is a YKK zipper, but this style of zipper here that's a little bit more traditional, I guess you could say, it doesn't work quite as smoothly as some of the other YKKs that we've seen on Timbuktu's bag. So not a huge deal. And as I mentioned, it should get easier over time, but something I wanted to go ahead and call out. As far as the capacity of the bag comes in at about 18 to 20 liters, which is a really good daily bag size in my opinion. I also really like that the bag maintains a slim silhouette even when it's fully packed out, making it very easy for navigating crowded cities or for jumping onto a bus or something like that. And I also think the slim silhouette gives it a very professional look. So if you do want to take this into the office or wear it with a nicer outfit, I feel like it's going to work really well. Jumping into the straps and the back paneling, the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. I really like how the straps have been implemented here. They have a nice amount of padding and comfort. They're really soft right out of the box, so they feel nice and broken in. On the inside, there's no sort of meshing material to help prevent moisture from building up, but the straps do have a nice width to help prevent it from digging into your shoulders while you're wearing it with a lot of weight. One thing to note here is that there is no sternum strap nor the ability to add one, but I don't think that's a huge deal considering this bag isn't quite that big. One thing that you will find on the strap is Timbuktu's classic bottle opener. Here it has a slightly updated look to match the more fashionable style of the bag. 
I do wish that this had been removable just to kind of make the bag a little bit cleaner and also from walking into a workplace environment as this does have a little bit more professional style, it would have been nice to have the option to take this off. In order to adjust the straps, they have this more classical double ring style, which does offer a pretty strong hold in my opinion, but it can be a little bit difficult to adjust. So it might take a little bit of fidgeting to get the fit just right. But once you have it, it's gonna stay in place real well. And then I also like that the straps include these little bands to help keep everything looking a little bit neater. Moving on to the back paneling, this has been pretty comfortable as well. There's a nice amount of padding here, but unfortunately like the straps, there's no meshy material and there's also no sort of elevation. So the bag will tend to get pretty sweaty while you're wearing it, especially if it's a hotter day. With that being said, it still felt pretty great even when I've had it fully loaded out with a lot of weight. A nice feature here on the back paneling is that there is a secret compartment that you can use to store more sensitive items such as a wallet or a passport. So plenty of space here. Currently what I have is just my field notes notebook to kind of show off the space, but you can see you could easily fit multiple items and as long as they're flatter, it should be okay. You don't want to put anything too bulky in here as it might start to dig into your back. And then if you don't want to use this to store any items, this actually doubles as a luggage pass through. So it has an additional zipper here on the bottom that you can open up and it creates this opening here. So if you wanna rest this on your suitcase, you can pass the handle through here so you can walk around the airport and not have to wear this on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag keeps things pretty simple. Besides the two outside compartments that we saw earlier in the video, there's just one additional quick access area on the front. And so it has this nice hidden zipper here that opens up very easily and a nice amount of space in this compartment for any items that you wanna grab quickly throughout the day. And so jumping in here, the first thing that I have is just a lightning cable to charge my phone and my tablet. And then I also have my Apple Magic Mouse. Even though with those items in there, there's still plenty of space in this compartment. I really like larger, simple compartments such as this, which are great for holding bulkier items. I definitely could have tossed in my GoPro or my sunglasses into here very easily. Besides that, no sort of internal organization or felt lining. The only other thing in this compartment is this longer lanyard that has a nice clip where you can attach your keys or a multi-tool, which is what I currently have here. This is the Gerber Dime, and I really like the implementation here. Very similar to other Timbuktu bags, this clip is very easy to open and close. And because it's metallic, it just has a little bit more of a durable feel. The next area we're gonna take a look at is the laptop compartment. And this bag is interesting in that it actually offers two laptop areas. One of them is here on the back so that you can access it from the outside. So if you wanna be able to get to your laptop quickly without opening the main area, this is gonna be a great spot to place it. And so plenty of space in this laptop pocket here. What I currently have is my 13 inch MacBook Pro. You should be able to fit up to a 15 inch laptop. There is some leftover space here. It also comes up a nice amount. If you do have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in here pretty comfortably. The compartment itself offers a nice amount of padding. This is kind of the back padding as well. This is what makes the bag comfortable. It's pretty thick. On the inside, there's no sort of felt lining or anything like that to help prevent against scratching. It's not fully suspended off the bottom of the ground, but one thing that I noticed is that the compartment comes down to around here, so it wasn't exactly touching the ground when I placed my bag down. I do wish that it had been maybe suspended just a little bit more, but for the most part, I didn't notice any issues with my laptop touching the ground, even when I placed my bag down a little bit harder. Jumping into the main area, this is a top loading bag. And so this flap here is secured with two magnetic buckles, very similar to what we've seen on bags such as the Boundary Supply Errant. And so this is an interesting choice here. These buckles are very easy to open and close, but they don't feel that secure in my opinion. So you can't pull the flap up. It does have this system where you have to kind of pull down in order to lift up, but it just always feels a little bit kind of loose in my opinion. I also don't like that you don't have much flexibility to adjust this flap. So if you're not carrying as much stuff, you can't really tighten it down to make the bag smaller or just make everything feel a little bit more secure. On top of that, if you're not really careful with the flaps, there is a risk that water could get on the inside of the bag if you leave these out to the side. So you always wanna be very careful as you're closing this up to kind of make sure these are tucked in and then make sure that there's a very secure hold here. Sometimes it can take a little bit to get used to actually closing this. Because there's magnets, it does kind of help guide it and you can just place it down. But I still wish that this had more of a buckle system like we've seen on the Boundary Supply Prima system or on the Burton Tinder Pack. 
With that being said, it's still very simple and quick to get into the main compartment. And so taking a look inside, just a large amount of space here, a pretty simple area overall. So I like how much flexibility this gives you, especially for holding bulkier items. So as you see here, even with the items that I normally carry with me, there's still some leftover space at the top. If I wanted to hold a lunchbox or a jacket or maybe a pair of gym clothes, I would have been able to fit those in here pretty comfortably. And so jumping into the items that I currently have here, first up, I have my Able Carry stash pouch, which just has some of my smaller tech accessories. And then I have my Beats Studio wireless headphones. After that, I have my GoRuck wired up, which has a lot of my chargers and dongles. Next up, I have a full-size moleskin notebook. And then I have a simple folder to hold my receipts and papers. And then the last thing that I have here is my Levitate portable standing desk. Now with the compartment empty, you can see just how much it comes up. So this is what makes it great for holding those bulkier items. I love the amount of capacity offered even in something such as an 18 to 20 liter bag because of this simple layout. This might even be a great spot to put something like a packing cube if I wanted to use this for a quick trip. So just a nice amount of versatility offered by this large bucket of space. On the back of this main area is what I would call the second laptop sleeve. This one has a nice Velcro loop here to help keep the device in place. I don't like this compartment quite as much just because I do have to open the main flap up to be able to get into it. But still nice to have two padded areas where you could store an additional laptop or a larger tablet. Currently what I have in here is just my iPad mini 2, but this larger compartment kind of swallows it up. So this is definitely gonna be more than enough space to hold even something like the larger iPad Pro or just another 13 to 15 inch laptop. The sleeve itself is fairly thin. It does offer some padding and this one is a little bit more suspended than the one on the outside. But for the most part, both compartments do a pretty good job of offering a nice amount of protection for your devices. And then even though things are kept pretty simple in this main compartment, it's nice that there is a little bit of organization on the inside here near the top for smaller accessories that you don't want getting lost in the bottom of the bag. And so first up, there's just a simple slip pocket here on the front, which offers a nice amount of space for anything that you wanna reach down and grab quickly. Currently what I have here is just my Samsung T5 portable hard drive. And then next to that, there is a simple slot that you can use to hold something like a pen or a stylus, which is what I currently have here. And then behind those, there is a larger zippered compartment that's gonna be good for holding some larger accessories. And so opening this up, currently what I have is just a USB mouse. And then I also have my Blue Power portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. So even with the larger items that I had in there, plenty of leftover space on the inside. There's no sort of internal organization, just a very simple pocket. But I really like these simpler layouts and the amount of space that they offer as they give you the most versatility for the items that you can store in there. So just a really nice job with the simple layout and space offered in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. And if you're looking for something durable and stylish that's gonna work well in a variety of environments and you don't mind paying a little bit of a higher price tag for it, the Timbuktu Foundry Pack is gonna be a good option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a really great experience testing out the Timbuktu Foundry Pack over the past couple of weeks. The bag has been really comfortable to wear. It has a great build quality. I really like the overall layout and I'm a big fan of the classic and stylish look. And so you can purchase this on Amazon or Timbuktu's site for about $230. So it is a premium price bag. And although it has a really solid build quality and some nice materials, I do think that there are a lot of other great options to consider that come in at under $200. And so as I was testing this out, one of the first bags this made me think of was the Thule Veya 25 liter bag that we looked at a while back. And that was a really stylish everyday bag that also worked well for carrying some gym clothes. It had a nice amount of organization, a really solid build quality, and it came in at around $120, $125. So if you're looking for a bag with a similar aesthetic to this, it's gonna have a little bit more organization and come in at a lower price point. The Thule Veya is gonna be a great option to check out. The next bag this made me think of was the Boundary Supply Errant Pack, which has been one of my favorite everyday bags that we featured on the channel. That one has a really solid build quality, some great organizational options, a lot of weather resistance, and it even has a similar top flap opening to this with a magnetic closure. That one's gonna come in at around $150, so still a bit of an investment, but if you're looking for something kind of like this that's gonna offer more weather resistance and organizational options, the Boundary Supply Errant Pack is gonna be another great option to keep in mind. The next bag this made me think of was the Dayfarer backpack, which is another stylish and durable everyday bag. That one comes in at around $180 and it's gonna have a really solid build quality, lots of great weather resistance, and it also works well as a gym bag. So if you're looking for something with this sort of aesthetic that's gonna work well for the office, the Dayfarer backpack is gonna be another great option to take a look at. 
Another bag this made me think of was the updated version of the Bellroy Classic Backpack, which is a really stylish and well-made everyday bag. It has a very simple layout, but plenty of space, some nice organizational options, a really great laptop compartment, and it just has a really awesome look. And so Bellroy actually has a lot of great stylish options, and they also have some top-loading bags similar to this, if this is a little bit more of your aesthetic. But if you're just looking for a simple bag that's gonna offer a lot of versatility and a great build quality, the updated version of the Bellroy Classic Plus is gonna be another great option to check out. If you like this style of bag, but you're looking to save a little bit of money, another great option to take a look at would be the Burton Tinder Pack, which is just a really simple top-loading bag that has a very classic look, a really solid build quality, a very simple layout, and it comes in at under $100. I've been using that bag for a really long time now. It's one of my favorite kind of versatile bags. It packs down really flat, so it's really good for taking on trips. And it just has a very versatile look that's offered in a lot of different color combinations. So if you're looking for something kind of like this, but you want a bag that comes in at under $100, that'll be a great option to keep in mind. And so the last option that I'll mention here, if you're looking for a premium bag with a similar aesthetic, is the Rucksack from Nutsack. And that was a really solid, simple bag that had a very classic look similar to this. It also had a really nice wax canvas and leather build. And that one's gonna come in a little bit more expensive at around $360, but it is made in the US. So if that's something that's important to you and you want a bag like this, then that's gonna be a great option to check out. With that being said, the Timbuktu Foundry Pack holds up really well against all those bags, and if you don't mind the higher price and you're looking for a bag that's going to hold up well over the longer term and has a really classic and stylish look, this is going to be a great option to check out. And so I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of the Foundry Pack and its style and overall layout, and if there are any similar bags that you think I should feature on the channel, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to thank you guys again for watching. And if you found this video useful, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.